Hello, my dear students. Today we are going to talk about English consonant sounds. By the end of this lecture, you will understand the main characteristics of English consonant sounds, and we will be able to classify English consonant phonemes according to the existing and phonetics principles. I would like to start our lecture by remembering the difference between a vowel and the consonant from the point of view of articulation. As you can see in this table, consonant is a speech sound in the production of which the stream of air needs to overcome an obstruction when it goes out. The stream of air is strong because in most cases it needs to break this obstruction. Muscular tension is concentrated at the place of obstruction and there is more noise than musical tone. Sonorants form a special group of consonants. In some characteristics, they are closer to vowels than to noise consonants. When we speak about pronunciation, we speak about sounds, not letters. 20 consonant letters in the English alphabet give 24 consonant sounds in the British accent. All of them are given on this slide. Now let's learn the symbols. Here you can see the symbols of the International Phonetic Alphabet. On the slide, you can also see a chart of English consonants. What I like most of all about this chart are these little pictures that will help you remember the sounds. The first picture shows a parrot, p, p sound. Its voiced pair is b, b as in bag. Number 23 is key. The letter is K, but the sound is K. Number 24 is G, its voiced pair. The letter is G, but the sound is G. Number 25 is flower. F. Flower. F. Its voiced pair is V. Vase. V. Number 27 shows a tie. T. Tie. Its voiced pair is D, as in dog. The next one is S snake. Number 30 is its voiced pair Z zebra. Then it comes shower sh and its voiced pair is Z television. Number 23 shows a thumb. Th its voiced pair is Z mother brother ch chess it consists of two symbols t and sh the next one is j it also consists of two symbols j d and j j jazz number 27 shows a leg l l and it comes to right, r, r, a witch, witch, yacht, y, y, monkey, m, m, nose. N. Singer. Mm. And the last one is house. <sighs> the most typical symbols for Russian people are sh, z, th, th, ch, ch, and m, mm, I think. Okay, so much for the symbols. Now let's get down to the principle of characterization English consonants. I would like to remind you that it is very important to think consciously how your mouth, tongue and lips are moving. 
because we are non-native speakers of English. In order to understand how to pronounce correctly, you need to know the main principles of characterization. English consonant sounds are classified according to the active organ of speech, the place of obstruction or the point of articulation, the work of the vocal cords, the force of articulation, the position of the soft palate, the type of obstruction, and the manner of the production of noise. The first principle is the active organ of speech. According to this principle, English consonant sounds are divided into labial, lingual, and glottal. Labial consonants are those in the production of which the lips are active. For example, as in p, b. There is only one glottal consonant in English. It is h. It is produced in the glottis. The glottis is the space between the vocal cords. The major group is lingual consonants. In the production of lingual consonants, the tongue is active. According to the part of the tongue which is active, lingual consonants are subdivided into forelingual, medialingual, and backlingual. Forelingual consonants are those in the production of which the tip and the blade are active. As in, for example, t, d, etc. There is only one medialingual consonant in English. It is y. Backlingual consonants are those in the production of which the back of the tongue is active. They are k, g, n in English. Forelingual consonants in their turn are subdivided into apical and curcuminal. Apical consonants are those in the production of which the tip and the blade of the tongue are against the upper teeth. And the alveoli. As for example, in t, d, f, v, ch, j, sh, j, s, z, n, and l. Here in the picture, you see the articulation for our cuminal sound, the only cuminal sound in English, r. Here, the tip and the blade of the tongue are against the back part of the alveoli. Here on this slide, you see a wonderful table of English consonants that will be of great use for you in the course of English phonetics. It is very user friendly. So far, we have discussed only one principle according to the active organ of speech. So you can see that English consonants are divided into labial, lingual, and glottal. Lingual consonants, in their turn, are subdivided into forelingual, medialingual, and backlingual. These are cuminal consonants and apical consonants. Now let's discuss the next principle. It is according to the place of obstruction, where the obstruction is formed. According to this principle, English consonant sounds are divided into bilabial, labial, Dental, alveolar, palato alveolar, post alveolar, palatal, and vela. Label consonants are those in the production of which the lips are brought together, as in, for example, p, b, w. Label dental consonants are those in the production of which the lower lip is against the upper teeth, as in f, v. Dental consonants are those in the production of which the tip of the tongue is against the upper teeth, as in th, th. Alveolar consonants are those in the production of which the tip of the tongue is against the alveoli, as in s, z, n, l, etc. Palatal alveolar consonants are those in the production of which the tip and the blade of the tongue against the alveoli. The front part of the tongue is raised in the direction of the hard palate, as in ch, j, sh, j. In postalveolar consonants, the tip and the blade of the tongue are against the back part of the alveoli. There is only one palatal consonant in English. 
Here in its production, the front part of the tongue is against the hot palate. The only consonants are those in the production of which the back part of the tongue is against the soft palate, as in k, g, n. That was according to the place of obstruction. Now, according to the type of obstruction. According to this principle, English consonants are subdivided into occlusive and constrictive. Occlusive consonants are those in the production of which a complete obstruction is initially formed, as in b. Constrictive consonants are those in the production of which an incomplete obstruction is initially formed, as in f, v. According to the method of the production of noise, a musical tone, occlusive and constrictive consonants are divided into plosives or stops, fricatives, nasal sonorants, fricatives, median and lateral sonorants. In order to understand the difference in the articulation, you need to experiment with me. When you pronounce a plosive consonant or a stop, for example, pa, you form a complete obstruction, and the stream of air, when it reaches your complete obstruction, breaks it and produces the sound of plosion. Let's try it again. B, t, d, k, g. Affricative consonants are complex sounds. For it, a complete obstruction is formed, as in t, d. Then it opens and the stream of air releases with the sound of friction. Let's try it. Ch. Fricatives are formed with an incomplete obstruction. When you pronounce a fricative sound, the stream of air is released with the sound of friction. F, v, s, z, sh, z. Okay. Now sonorants. Of course, when we speak about sonorants, we don't speak about noise, we speak about musical tone. In nasal sonorants, we have a complete obstruction. They are produced in the nasal cavity. When we speak about median and lateral sonorants, we speak about an incomplete obstruction. There is only one lateral sonorant in English. It is l or l. When we produce the sonorant, the stream of air goes out by the sides of the tongue. The other sonorants are median sonorants. They are r, y, w. When we pronounce these sonorants, the stream of air goes out by the central part of the tongue. Cauticulation, or the second obstruction. According to this feature, consonants are subdivided into unicentral, and bicentral. In the production of a unicentral consonant, there is only one focus of obstruction. When we produce a bicentral consonant, there are two foci of obstruction. Bicentral consonants can be with the tongue front articulation or a tongue back articulation. Most palatal alveolar consonants are produced with the tongue front articulation. Plus the light variant of l. In order to produce a dark variant of l, you need to have the tongue back articulation. It means that you need to raise the back part of the tongue towards the soft palate and produce the sound. Compare, please. L, l. If we pronounced w only with one place of obstruction at the lips, it would sound like v, v, v. But in order to sound like w, you need this tongue back articulation. It means the back part of the tongue is raised in the direction of the soft palate. W. The work of the vocal cords and the force of articulation. There are nine pairs of English consonants according to this principle. Half of them are produced without voice. 
The other half is pronounced in the same place, in the same manner, but with a voice. In order to understand it, please close your ears. As I cannot close my ears, I will check the feeling here in my larynx. P, B, T, D, K, G, F, V, F, V, S, Z, Sh, Z, Ch, J, H. Only H doesn't have a pair. All voiceless consonants are forties or strong, and all voiced consonants are leanies or weak. According to the position of the soft palate, English consonants can be oral and nasal. Here in the pictures you can see the nasal articulation and the oral one. In order to produce an oral sound, you need to have the uvular raised, like here. Then it blocks the passage to the nasal cavity. So the air from the lungs goes out through the oral cavity and the oral sounds are produced. When the uvula is lowered, the passage to the nasal cavity is not blocked. So or the stream of air from the lungs goes out through the nasal cavity and nasal sounds are produced. In English, they are m, n, n. Here on the slide you can see an example of how to classify an English consonant. While classifying an English consonant, please specify the principle.